Hello and welcome to Waltrip Unfiltered. I'm Michael Waltrip, your host. So glad you took a chance to join us. Spend some time listening to our content. It's going to be a great show today. We've got last week's winner from Las Vegas, Joey Logano, joining us. We're going to talk about the racing in Vegas, what we expect to see at ISM Speedway, and we're going to do it all right now. Hamlin off turn number four. No, side-by-side -side battle to the finish this time. Denny Hamlin wins his second Daytona 500. Brad Keselowski is going to win the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. Nose to tail off turn four. Oh, so close. Wow. Yeah, he was there. Joey Logano scores his first win of the season in his championship defense. The 2019 season. She's up and running, isn't she? Kicked off with that amazing Daytona 500. It's, a, it's the best trophy in all of NASCAR. And you know that race is going to be nuts. It always is. You never know what to expect, what's going to happen. Denny Hamlin pulls into victory lane. Thrilling race, a lot of crashes late, but a lot of action and, and fun to watch for sure. And then after that, I think there was a lot of curiosity. What should we see? What will it look like in 2019? You know, people say we have a new rules package, 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 package. I don't like that word. I prefer to go with we have new cars. We have 2019 cars that we're racing. It doesn't matter what their package is. You know, they're aerodynamic. They got power. They're fun to watch. They're fun to drive. And we're going to see the best drivers in the world go out and try to beat each other. Nothing's really going to be any different. The hope was the racing would be closer. Well, guess what? It is. The last two races, both at Atlanta, when Brad Kozlowski barely held off Martin Truex Jr. And in Las Vegas, Logano held off a charging Brad Kozlowski. The closest two finishes in the last 29 mile and a half races. NASCAR made adjustments to the rules so that the cars would run closer together so it'd be more entertaining to the fans. And how people, how some people can derive that as a negative, I just really don't get it. <laughs> it was a great change. It worked. We've seen two races and, and the racing's been better. Statistically speaking, I'm talking science. I'm not just telling you my opinion. People always say to me, boy, you just, you think everything's great, don't you? Well, that's not exactly true. I just don't choose to be negative about things that aren't based in fact. And facts come from statistics. I have three stat guys and they are on it. They told me at Atlanta, it was the closest finish in the last 28 mile and a half races. Well, Las Vegas would be the closest now and Atlanta second. So the last 29 mile and a half races, the last two have been the closest finish. And that's what you want, right? Close finishes. So I know statistically speaking, the racing's closer. At Atlanta, there were more lead changes, more cars on the lead lap, more different leaders. All those were the most we'd seen in recent history at that track. So don't argue with me. I'm right. Racing is better. And this weekend, we have another unknown. The rules for the 2019 cars that we're racing are a bit different at ISM Raceway. The cars will have more power, but they're going to have the same aerodynamics, which means, can you figure it out? You're following along, right? More power, better aerodynamics than ever? Yes. A new track record. They're going to be going faster than ever at ISM Speedway this weekend. So the driver's jobs, in my opinion, I want to ask Joey his opinion. The driver's jobs in 2019 got harder. If you got more cars in the lead lap, there are more lead changes. That means you're racing closer to each other. And one thing we know for certain, the racing after the restarts, it's out of hand. I mean, they're all over three and four wide. And those cars are difficult to drive in those situations because the air around them, the turbulence, it makes them do crazy things. So we've seen talented racers go three and four wide. I thought maybe we'd see a big one at Las Vegas. I thought that was a real possibility because of the racing, but the guys were able to negotiate through it and then race to the checkered. We didn't have one caution flag other than the stage breaks at Las Vegas, and we had that close of a finish. That tells you how NASCAR has nailed the rules for 2019. Kyle Busch is going to do it in Las Vegas again. 
winning at home. Kyle victorious in Vegas. Home sweet home. Career win 93 for Kyle Busch comes at Las Vegas. And Kyle Busch strikes again. We talked last week about Kyle running in the lower series, the truck and the Xfinity, and he did in Vegas and he won them both. A lot of people don't like Kyle racing those races. I happen to think it's a good thing for those kids to be able to race alongside one of the best ever, well, the best ever in a truck and probably the best ever in an Xfinity car as well, and and learn and see what it takes to go win one of these races. He dominated the truck race, but man, he had his hands full in that Xfinity battle couple of overtime spins and crashes, but he was able to hang on to the victory. Very competitive racing, though, both Friday night and Saturday in the Xfinity race. I enjoyed the, the races a lot. Not only did we see a great finish at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the cup race, but what about Haley Deegan? She was over at the dirt track, and she won on a last lap pass, a thrilling last lap pass. Went down into turn one. It looked like there might be enough room for a car to squeeze in there. She made it work and drove to victory lane. And then the next day on Fox with Adam Alexander and I, we interviewed Haley and she made some big news, big announcement. She's coming ARCA racing in 2019. She's going to run six races for Venturini Motorsports. I love that girl, man. She's got a great spirit, a lot of fun to be around, and obviously very talented behind the wheel. I think she would be an awesome guest for Walter Bunfilter. Talk to her about her new plans and what 2019 is going to bring for her. And on a sad note, I want to send out our thoughts and prayers to the family of Tanner Thorson. Tanner is a talented young racer who was involved in a serious car crash this past week, and he's recovering in the hospital. Just want him to know that we're thinking about him. Hey, Alex, what do you say? Let's dial up old Joey Logano. He's a 2018 Monster Energy Cup Series champion and a great guy. He had some interesting comments in the media center the other day about negativity. I wanted to hug him because I don't like negativity either. People love to talk about negative stories, and I don't know why. I don't understand it. There's a lot of positive going on in our world, and I'm not just talking about NASCAR racing. I'm honored to have last week's Monster Energy Cup Series winner from Vegas, Joey Logano, joining us today. Joey, how are you, bud? Good. I'm traveling back and forth between all these races. I just, uh, little man's a little bit too far for, for little man to, uh, travel all the way out there on the airplane. He, he's got like a two hour limit on the airplane. So <laughs> anything further than that, it becomes a disaster where he can't sit still anymore, which is about the same for me, but, um, I decided to just go back and forth. That way I could spend a little time with him. I love that. I was going to get right into the race, but since you brought it up, your little man Hudson, I know you got a lot of cars and love cars. Is he into cars? Oh yeah, he's <laughs> he's in the cars already, which I guess is because I guess you expose them to it, they they tend to to like it. But uh, yeah, he's he doesn't have a huge vocabulary yet. But one of his three words is vroom vroom, <laughs> vroom vroom. Oh, nice. mm, when he eats and uh, and some and dad yeah, but everybody's dad yeah. Every, anybody he likes is dad yeah right now. I thought I was special, but I'm not. So, but yeah. uh, he he's all about walking around now and, and walk, every time he walks around in the parking lot he walks up to their cars and he wants to touch their wheels and gets his hands all dirty <laughs> but it's pretty cool you must have grown up pretty much the same way because as a kid every picture i've ever seen of joey logano he's either racing something or another so we'll probably see hudson take that same path yeah i, I you know um it, it would be cool you know I, it's, i'm not pushing him to to race or do anything but I have a lot of good memories of just, you know, hanging out with my dad and, you know, playing around in the garage or taking a, you know, a classic car to go get ice cream or something like that. Like those are some of my favorite memories as a kid. So I hope he's at least into that. He doesn't have to race if he doesn't want to, but uh, you know, that, that car hobby is, is always uh, kind of fun for a father and a son to be able to be together. The baby seat's kind of hard to strap into a lot of cars. <laughs> So uh, we we don't need to do that. But the golf cart is, is the main ride right now. He, he's all about that. But um, I got a, a John Deere tractor. He, he's all about jumping on that and we'll move some dirt around or something. And and he thinks that's the coolest thing to see the bucket go up and down and all. But uh, th that's it right now. I would think that with those awesome burnouts after you win a NASCAR race, and we've seen you do them at home as well, I bet you that Hudson's about ready to hop in and take a ride in one of those burnouts. <laughs> he is it's uh you know it's funny we did the um the gender reveal party you know and you, you 
when you tell everyone where they're having a boy or a girl and we did a big burnout and we had uh you know tires that came out with pink or blue smoke and so we had you know tires of blue smoke and you started doing a burnout and that's how you're able to tell you know what you're having for a baby and um yeah that was that was pretty cool so i was just i was technically his first burnout mama was in there with me <laughs> You'll probably That's say I'm all. crazy. <laughs> well, you know, you got to be a little bit crazy to do what we do, if you ask me. And with that, let's talk about the Las Vegas victory. What a fun race. It was so entertaining for me to watch. And, you know, I don't think the people at home really understand. When you commit to run the wall, you got to be just that, committed, because you can't halfway do it. And with Brad coming, and you knew he was going to go low, and you had to run as hard as you could right out next to the wall. <laughs> wow. Take me through those last few laps as you battle toward the checkered. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, uh, it was intense for sure. And, um, you know, it was earlier in that run after the second stage where uh, Brad started making some time uh, by running the wall. And uh, my spotter, TJ, told me, uh, told me that. And I was like, well, I guess I better figure it out now. Uh, so... <laughs> I went up there and, and got a little bit used to it and was able to find more speed. And, you know, the way that, that wall works is it's kind of crazy, but it, it drives the, you know, kind of a wedge between the, the car and the wall and the air kind of gets forced in between the car and the wall and it creates more side force for the car, uh, which also is more grip. So the closer you get, the faster you go. But the closer you get, the better chance you got to hit in it. So, you know, you, you got you to gotta commit to go fast. And, uh, and so it's risk versus reward. And when you come down to the last few laps and race for the win, you risk it all, right? You go, you're going for the win. Uh, so you're, you're able to push a little bit harder and put it right up against there. And, um, you know, it was, it was a fun race racing my teammate like that. And, uh, you know, it was definitely, it was close. You know, that last lap, he got a good run um, off of turn two. And I felt like I was just far enough ahead that he couldn't slide job. It, what went through my mind was that race and, uh, Kansas with Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards. Remember that race when he when he split him and he drove all the way up in front of him and hit the wall? Yeah, we had a truck race in Iowa like that last year. So I was thinking of that going into the last corner. I was like, man, is he gonna is he gonna do that? I don't really know. But I was like, man, yeah, I'm just far enough ahead that where I think I could run the top and stay ahead of him. Um, and I was. It was just just enough that where uh, when we came off the corner. Um, he was at my quarter panel where I had enough momentum to be able to break through and, and get the win. So that was cool. What's it like being behind the wheel and just checking that mirror every now and then and coming down toward the checkered and you see that car just getting bigger and bigger behind you? Are you like, oh, no, how am I going to deal with this? <laughs> just counting down the lap, hoping the checkered flag comes quicker <laughs> sooner rather than later, really. you know, you, you, When you're in the lead and you're driving away and you're just, kind of running your thing and then you're just waiting for the checkered flag but you know when when the car behind you is running you down and just you know you're hustling and um you know trying to figure out what lane to get to lap cars trying to get out of the way trying to you know you just can't wait for the checkered flag and that intensity is ratcheted up and uh you know in all honesty that the feeling of winning is is actually a little better because it was close and you didn't know you had it till the end um so that part's really neat but the the last 10 laps probably takes a year or so off my life. <laughs> you're just staring <laughs> up in the mirror. You're, you're moving around different lanes. You're, you're trying to listen to your spotter and, uh, and you know, it's on the line, right? I mean, these races aren't easy to win. You know, there's, there's, they don't, you can't take any of them for granted, uh, th that you're going to get. So, um, you, you never want to give one up. Well, you said another year off your life. You got plenty of time to give. You're still in your twenties. And if you look at the stats, I'm going to go back to 2009 when you won Rookie of the Year, 2015 Daytona 500, 2018 champion. All those numbers sound really cool for a guy that's just now hitting his prime and will be running races for many years to come. And you know what? In 2019, you're going to be racing for a championship with that victory at Vegas. With all those accomplishments, I mean, I know too, personally, we've talked about the struggles of getting to the point where you are now, how cool does it feel to be 28 and look back and see what all you've done and then look forward in anticipation about all the things yet that you could accomplish? Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah it's hard to look forward because you don't really know what, what God's got in store for you. Uh, you know, all this can change in a second, but it is healthy sometimes to look back and remember where you came from 
uh, and the struggles that you go through. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, getting to the cup level wasn't the hard part, uh, which for most people getting to the level is the hardest part. But for me, I got here, you know, when I was 18 years old. Um, and then I realized I wasn't ready. <laughs> and and uh, so did the rest of the world. <laughs> and, and as I was trying to figure this out and figure out how to, you know, race a cup car against, you know, the, the best, right? These are the best stock car racers in the country. I mean, they're, it's incredible um, what they're able to do. And, uh, you know, just trying to, to learn every week. And then you're trying to lead as a, you know, as an 18 year old lead a team and that's next to impossible. Um, so you don't have much of a resume behind you. So, you know, it, it was really challenging, but those moments are, you know, what has grown me into who I am today and I wouldn't trade them for the world. Um, but when you talk about those stats, I think, man, how many race wins I feel like I've given away, you know, the first four years of my career, you know, I, the first four years, I only had a couple wins and to be able to now, you know, be able to grab quite a bit more wins in the last, you know, five, six years has been, been a pretty fun ride. Um, but I never forget how hard it is and, uh, and what that was like when I first started, um, you know, trying to figure all this out and, there's still stuff to figure out, believe me, especially with this new rules pack. It's just, it's like a whole new game again that you're, you're all trying to figure out again. I was talking to Denny last week and he agreed with me that the driver's jobs officially got harder in 2019, or at least different. The cars are going to be closer together. There's going to be more cars finishing on the lap, more lead changes. And all those things I think are going to happen and that will make your job harder. I know we're just three races in, but I want to get your opinion. Did your job just get more difficult against the competition? It didn't get harder and it didn't get easier. It just is different. Um, you know, you, you know how it is, Michael. You go to like a Daytona or a Talladega, it's not technically easier. It's just different. There's a lot. You're thinking of where other cars are, what your surroundings are, how to work the draft, how to you know, how to position yourself to win at the end. You know, now with this new, this new rules package, it's like a hybrid between what you have at Daytona Talladega and what Las Vegas and Atlanta and, and Auto Club Speedway, all of them used to be, right? So it's kind of in between what it, what it is. So, you know, by yourself, the cars are, are a little bit easier to drive. But when you get in traffic and you get in the race situation, they're a lot more unpredictable than last year because the hole in the air is, is bigger. And, you know, they just jump out, they jump loose or jump tight out of nowhere. Um, and your reaction time has to be quicker. And then on top of that, you get cars quick or closer to you. And you got to be able to try to manipulate, uh, you know, the cars around you for what, what is the best position for your car. Um, so that mental engagement that you need in the race, uh, I feel like that has become a little bit more strenuous and a little harder to do than what it was last year. So you, you think of last year, you have four to five laps on a restart of some really intense racing, and then you fall into a rhythm and you start racing, you know, and you start trying to move around and find speed. You know, now we got 15 laps, maybe a little longer of hard, intense restart type action where cars are right on top of each other before it falls into the kind of a separation and, and you moving around and all that. So it's cool that we still have both, but that intensity moment uh, on restarts lasts longer, which is mentally uh, strenuous for sure. Yeah, it's definitely different. But to me, everything you just described, it sounds harder. I appreciate your opinion. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the fans like how different it will be. Also think that when you're watching, you guys deal with restarts and having all those cars around you. It's going to be more stressful, put more pressure on you and your team because you don't get hung in the back and be in a mess in the middle of traffic after having a bad pit stop. Those guys have to step up too. So everything, I think, just intensified for the 2019 season. And the intensity is even going to be ratcheted up more this weekend because you guys are going to be hauling the mail at ISM. A new track record, I'm for sure. Oh, you're not kidding. Uh, you know, when you get that 750 package uh, back in with that added downforce, these cars are going to be going around, going around there pretty fast. So um, it's a whole new game when we get there, too. So, I mean, you may think it's a similar package to what it was last year, but it's really not. I mean, we add, you know, around 60% more downforce than what we had. I mean, that's, that's a lot. You know, that's really good. So, um, 
it, it's going to make quite the difference. And, and the race will be, you know, obviously the setup would be different, but the way we race each other would be different as well. So and what's going to happen when you're behind a car now with that bigger spoiler. So a lot of that's an unknown that we're going to figure out when we get out on the racetrack and, and, uh, and practice behind a car and, and kind of, you know, see what we need as far as traffic. And, you know, probably one of the biggest pieces that kind of, I think has been overshadowed so far, as far as the storyline is that track wire adjusted being gone this year. That's a, that's a big piece, especially when you have a rules change and you don't really know what you're looking for. You know, it's harder to hit that setup right on, you know, when you're going to the racetrack for the first time with the new rules package. And when you had that track bar adjuster, that kind of got you out of a, out of a bind sometimes. And now it's even more important to make sure you have your car set up right because you got what you got when that run starts. And I think that's a good thing. It should be that way. I don't think we should have the ability to fix our cars. We should have to, as drivers, figure out how to overcome it. And then as crew chiefs and, and uh, engineers that should figure out how to make the right adjustments and 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 uh on a pit stop i think that just adds more to the race um and also makes more comers and goers right when you had the track bar adjuster and you were tight on the front side of a run you just raise the track bar and then you lower it back down and and you can kind of get through now there's just there's cars that are obviously way better on the short run compared to the long run and vice versa so i think that's pretty neat yeah i love that too and i said at the open of this podcast a little bit earlier, I'm not into saying the P word, rules package. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say the new 2019 cars because the 2019 cars on the racetrack are really cool and we know they're different, but it's a car and just, you said it so well, it's racing. It's the same thing we've always seen. So for folks to, and P.S., I love your media center thoughts on people being negative and rude. I hate that as well. I don't know why we got to pick on our sport like that sometimes. It just seems like people don't have anything better to do, I guess. So, Walter Unfiltered, we say 2019 cars. And the rules? Yes, they are different, but you guys are the best drivers in the world. And I'm still having a ball watching you all figure it out. Oh, we're having fun too. You know, I think the bottom line is, that the cream will always rise to the top, right? It, it, it doesn't it doesn't discredit the best drivers or the best teams. And and maybe in qualifying it does a little bit. But when the race starts, the the teams that are the smartest and the drivers that are the most talented and, and work the hardest will get the reward. Uh and, and we've seen that already in the first few races. Um that if you look at the, the finishing order of the top ten there's not really a big surprise in that top 10. It's the same cars that were there last year. The cars that are the best, the teams that are the best, the drivers that are the best are up front racing for wins, racing for in the top 10 uh, where they, where it should be. You know, you don't want to discredit that and, and, and change a car so much that you don't get that. Um, I think you, you see right now that, um, you know, the best teams are, are working hard trying to figure this out. And, and those are the teams that are, are successful right now. So, um, you know, I I want to keep that. I don't think that should change. You know, you don't want it to be the, the great equalizer. You want the cars to be closer. You want more racing, but you want the best to still be the best. Well, hats off to the Penske team doing so well with the Mustangs right off the bat. There was a lot of talk during the off season about, oh, we didn't design our Mustang for these new rules. With the, with the big spoiler in their aerodynamics, this could be difficult for us. Last year, the Camaro came out, and the year before, the Camry, and they struggled a bit. But you guys, you've hit it right off the bat. How's that feel driving the new car? It's, well, I was doing pretty good. <laughs> hey, as long as you're winning and, and running up front, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, but, you know, I think that the timing of that, Michael, is really what has what been the best for us is, you know, when you think about when, when Chevy introduced the Camaro and, and, and tied it with their new Camry, you know, there wasn't a rules change with that. And now yeah. with the 2019 rules introduced at the same time as we're introducing the Mustang, you're already going to go through a, a development cycle. Even if we still race the Fusion, what we did last year, we'd have to restart and, and, and relearn everything when you have a spoiler and a rad pan and a big splitter and it's so much bigger than what we raced before. So you'd be starting all over anyway. So it's the perfect time to switch to the new, the new body and get that Mustang out there because 
we're going to have to go through the same development cycle as we are right now. Some fun things happen in Vegas over at the dirt track. Did you get a chance to check it out? Every race over there was decided by a last lap pass. The world of outlaws, the sprint cars, and then what Haley Deegan did on the last lap. That move was incredible. I saw it on TV. I was uh, in bed sleeping by that point. <laughs> uh, I was on East Coast time, man. I go to sleep. But uh, yeah, I mean, what a what a great race, and um, to be able to, to be able to see that, and, and it's cool to watch those cars on dirt. I've never seen you know the K and N cars on dirt before, and it's kind of fun to watch them and and, and what they're doing. And uh, I mean, the heat races were pretty exciting, even you know. So uh, yeah, she did a great job capitalizing on the opportunity in front of her you know when two cars are racing side by side and they move up she you know stuck her nose in there and rooted them out of the way a little bit i thought it was great it didn't look like there was much room there for her to get in but she made it happen moved jones out of the way and on her way she went to victory i got in bed about eight o'clock that night joey and i turned on dirt vision on my telephone and i just i couldn't turn it off I just kept watching race after race after race, and I wanted to see so bad how Haley would do. And the finish, man, it definitely didn't disappoint. You've got to check it out if you hadn't seen it. Of course, I mean, we're, we're racing. I was I was out there watching uh, for for you know the majority of the night before I got tired and went to sleep and thought I need to drive a race car tomorrow. I should probably sleep, but <laughs> um, it, it it was fun to watch that and, and to watch the sprint cars go around. I mean, you're a motorsports fan. It doesn't really matter what it is. You know, I, I'm, I just like racing. I'm a race fan. And uh, whether we're, we're, it's NASCAR racing, which obviously I enjoy the most. That's why I've always dreamed to do it. But, you know, you, you still remember, you know, kind of the, the grassroots racing, you know, whether it's, you know, asphalt, late models or, you know, dirt stuff, which I didn't really do much of, but it's still fun for me to watch. Um, you know, all that, that stuff's a lot of fun, you know, and, and even with you know, Penske, there's, you know, the Indy cars and the, you know, kind of, you know, the road course stuff. And I just, I enjoy watching it and, and listening to their communication and uh, what's different compared to what I do and what's similar. And it's just kind of fun for me. Talking about Team Penske, do you ever think about the 24 hours at Daytona, the 24 hours of Ma or any of those races? Are they on your radar moving forward? I think it'd be really cool to do one day. Um, I think it'd be fun. I've never really, I haven't approached Roger yet about it and, and talked much about it, but it would be fun, you know, to put a car together and like have all, all the NASCAR guys, you know, and have me and, you know, Brad and Blaney and Menard maybe or, or something like that all jump in it and go, that would be a fun, a fun experience for us. Um, you know, and then, you know, you'll, I mean, the Rolex 24 seems like, you know, you think of big races in America. Yeah, you think of Indy 500, Daytona 500, you know, you know some of the crown jewels in NASCAR, Southern 500, things like that. But Rolex, the Rolex 24 is in there uh, pretty high as a race you want to win in America, um, you know, one of the crown jewel events. And I, that would be something pretty cool to be involved in. Yeah, I was able to race up once. My teammate was Clint Boyer. And I saw him at 4 in the morning, and he was the same crazy guy as he is at 4 in the afternoon. It's really fun, though to experience that race with your teammates. You drive the car and you get out, you tell them what you think about it, then you go take a nap and go get back in the car and do it all over again. I'm so thankful I had that opportunity. Yeah, I, I, it, it's fun, you know, when I, when I talk to those guys at Penske and, and how, how they do it and, you know, the driver changes and, like you said, you get out and you, you, you don't really have much time to tell someone what, what the car is doing, but, you know, before the next driver gets in and, yeah, that, that's all pretty cool. I would hate to be the guy that crashed it, though. That would be the, oh, the worst thing, you know? It's like, oh, I'm that guy. And the other guy didn't even get to drive or something. Or, or you ran 20 hours of the race and then crashed. Like, that would that would really stink. I had those same thoughts when I raced that Ferrari at Le Mans. I didn't want anybody to wreck it, but I darn sure didn't want to be the one. One last thing I'm going to ask you about. I think I think we all get mad at negative stories. You and I both, particularly because we just explained, we're race fans. We love this stuff. And somebody wants to talk crap about it, it just pisses me off. Yeah, well, that pisses me off. But even in a, a, a more of a global view, people just, that's what made me mad in the media center the other day. People just like to complain. Like, they'd rather complain than, than give a compliment. And, 
you know, the people that, that enjoy our, our racing, which is a lot, by the way, that really enjoy it, they say, this is great, looks good, I enjoyed the race, and then they move on with their life, and they don't feel like they have to go on Twitter or any social media platform and and, and raise their voice and be big and bad and try to make a story out of nothing. Um, and, you know, the people that, that don't enjoy it don't enjoy much of, of anything. They just like to complain. It doesn't matter if it's racing or whatever. <laughs> people like that. I don't know. They like to complain. And people like hearing bad news. Why do every time we turn on the news, it's a negative story almost every single time? Uh, and that's just a contagious attitude where I think just our whole society is just like that. And it's aggravating because there's, there is so much good going on in our world, whether it's in racing or, or you know, the, the size of hearts that people have where they're doing stuff in the charitable world. Uh, you know, I see some of that stuff firsthand where people do the nicest things. And, and unfortunately, those stories just don't get published like, like a, a bad story. Um, you yeah. know, there's, there's, I, I feel like they say there's no news like bad news. And, you know, no one really, eventually, you just get sick of that. <laughs> and I want to hear something good because there is so much good. And I see it and I want to put that out there. And it's just, it's hard to do. I know. I understand. I don't even watch the news anymore. If I do, I watch Fox News because it isn't as negative as the others. But bad news and bad stories still pretty much get on my nerves. And I just want to tell you that I've seen firsthand what your foundation has done for for underprivileged and needy kids and, and just folks in general. And it warms my heart. And, and you know, that's, those are the things that, you know, I, I feel like God's given us an, an amazing platform to be able to do, you know, and I get these letters all the time that, wow, you, you know, you shook my son's hand. He's going through this, or my grandfather was going through this. And then you said hello and talked to him for five minutes. And, you know, it, it just completely changes. And I'm like, I don't realize what I'm doing half the time. I just feel like I just say hello. And Hey, thanks for, you know, supporting our sport and, and being here. And, and, but just, just doing the smallest things. And that's just for, for me and what I do, but doing the smallest things, just smiling at somebody sometimes changes someone's day uh, and, and then who knows the, the reaction that snowballs from there so you know I, I always you know part of our our mission for for Joe Logano Foundation is to inspire others to live a life of generosity because you know I feel like the the impact that we can all make together um, if we all just do the right thing when when that when that option comes up uh, you know we can really um, you know help our society and change people's lives together and that's that's a big deal. You know, when you think about the community of NASCAR and how big we all are, if we do things together, uh, we can do some incredible things. Well, I really appreciate you and your spirit. You've always got a smile on your face, and you're always so good to fans. And I know that. I've seen it firsthand. And also really appreciate you joining me today on, on this podcast. This is episode three. <laughs> we want to make it really entertaining for the fans and informative and you've added so much by sharing not only stories about your racing, but about your little man, Hudson, and all you do in the charitable world. So <laughs> good luck, buddy, racing your 2019 car, particularly this weekend at the ISM Raceway. It's a fan favorite. What a great destination ISM Raceway is. And um, I'm looking forward to watching you guys break track records and haul an ass. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, Joey. All right, appreciate it. I'll, uh, I'll see you out there. Now, how fun was that? Thank you so much, Joey, for your time joining us. We're going to get all the top stars in NASCAR, and we're going to talk about all the stories that make up this sport we all love so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you that tune in and listen to Waltrip Unfiltered. also hope that you will share the fun that we're having here with all your friends and ask them to sign up, subscribe, and listen to Waltrip Unfiltered via their favorite podcast app. So I'm Michael. I can't wait to watch the action at ISM Raceway this weekend and have a special guest for you guys all to enjoy next week. Appreciate you. I'll see you at the races.